to the Chain Clankers Podcast with your hosts, Quinn Ferris and Horatio Gonzalez. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chain Clankers. Welcome in everyone to the Chain Clankers Podcast. I'm your host, Quinn Ferris, joined here as always with Horatio Gonzalez. Horatio, how are we doing today? I'm good. A little cooler here today, so I didn't get a chance to go out and play at all today, but it's all right. We played a uh, wild 18 yesterday so i'm okay taking a kind of little break off today yeah that's true uh we did participate in a pretty wacky tournament yesterday we're definitely going to talk about that uh but today's episode what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about our experience yesterday and maybe some things to look out for some bad tournaments as well as we're going to be talking about the new era of disc golf on the pro side because the Pro Tour Championship was this week, and it's going to be on ESPN2. It's actually a really great tournament, really fun tournament to watch, which was really interesting. And it's one of those tournaments that is unlike any other tournament because it's almost kind of like match play in a sense to where if you're not inside the top four for that round, you're not going to be moving on. So very interesting tournament nonetheless. It was very awesome to watch. Spoilers, if you want to watch it on Jomez and you haven't yet, uh, spoilers will be in this episode, so definitely uh you know maybe listen to the first part and don't listen when we talk about the winner i'll give another spoiler update when we do talk about the winners but yeah got a great show lined up for you guys so i guess let's talk about the tournament that we just participated in um it was supposed to be a two-round tournament and it was what 25 minutes away from you maybe 25 30 minutes if yeah, 15 20 minutes yeah yeah uh where i'm located it was roughly two and a half hours, something like that. I woke up at the crisp early time of 4.45 in the morning. Uh, I was on the road by 5.30. I literally, if you didn't see our Instagram story, my truck is totaled, gone. I mean, not, not official yet, but more than likely totaled. Uh, thank you to those who did reach out. Uh, do appreciate those kind words. But uh, yeah, my, my truck is gone. Hit a deer going at least 70 miles per hour. It literally was a split second thing, just one second. I was driving the next second there it was, and then the next second I was sliding 100, 200 feet in the middle of a highway with incoming traffic uh, coming at me. So very scary situation. Nonetheless, I literally, uh, outside of Jesus Christ coming down and saving me, I have no idea how I completely walked away. Not even a scratch, not a bruise, nothing. Uh, my neck is a little stiff today, but, you know, hey, my neck always hurts. So <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, more than likely, unfortunately, my truck is probably totaled. Uh, which does suck. Still waiting to hear back about that. Um, so definitely was going into this tournament not super stoked. That's for sure. Right. Um, and then the next day I got locked out of my apartment on accident. So really was, has not been my weekend this, <laughs> this weekend. But, you know, that's okay. Talking about this tournament a little bit more. We got there. I mean, you came and picked me up, which very grateful for that. Um, we got there maybe what, five minutes before two minutes but yeah supposed to go on two minutes something like that um and i want to hand it over to you real quick uh to kind of move us along from here because i know that you definitely have some some issues with the tournament i definitely have some issues so i'd like to hear uh maybe some things that these new players who are getting into disc golf should be looking out for when it comes to potentially bad tournaments and just overall your experience uh this tournament this past weekend yeah so this tournament i saw it pop up um it was a nadgt event so national amateur disc golf tour um, it's basically the pro tour version or the amateur version of the pro tour they have a bunch of tournaments all over the u.s and this one was especially cool because you could compete and if you won your division you could qualify be invited to the championship that i believe is in texas so you could be invited to that even not having competed in a bunch of the other events but this was supposed to have taken place a few months ago but because of covid it was postponed and it got changed to the course that's uh, locally here in derby kansas and it was on disc golf scene signed up for it not a cheap tournament it was like 50 dollars. it was very expensive sorry to cut you off but it was 50 dollars to start and then there was the 10 the 10 dollar additional fee for not being part of the pdga 
which in my opinion was a little weird considering it wasn't a PDGA tournament. It was a in PDAJ sanction. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Um, so I guess that does make a little bit more sense, but $50 nonetheless, very expensive tournament. And then I don't think you had to pay for this, but I had to pay for this because for whatever reason they had registration close a week before the tournament, which didn't make any sense to me. And then literally I emailed them about it and then they opened it back up to not just myself, but the public until the day before the tournament. And there was an additional like seven or $8 fee that I had to pay for a late players pack fee or something like that. So they initially said that this tournament was going to be $75 worth of value. And I think I had to pay $70 just to play in this tournament, let alone, I mean, the uncontrollable, of my vehicle but i mean yeah the cost was absolutely outrageous for this tournament sorry to jump in i just i had to get that off my chest yeah and so usually um one question a lot of people ask is for especially non-pro players is why play tournaments where you pay money and you can't win because officially as a non-pro player you cannot take money in winnings so that's why there's players packs and usually really cool tournaments, you get really sweet players packs. You'll get discs, shirts, coupons. Um, I know there was one, I think a year ago, they gave them backpacks and just about basically it comes out to the amount that you paid to enter the tournament or greater. Um, they make those player packs as good as possible. That way they can get players in the tournament. And that's kind of the incentive for amateurs to play these tournaments. And we saw the the event page and it said $75 worth of players pack. It was supposed to be a end of a disc and a dry fit t-shirt. And then you had your choice of another disc of like every single manufacturer and then a towel, a coupon and something else. There were like two or three more coupons or something like that in there. So it was supposed to be a pretty sweet players pack. And that was kind of the reason we did it. And then also because it was just one of the last local tournaments for the season for my area. And I just wanted to play one more. And that's a course I could go and practice a lot. And so that's why we signed up for it. And that's why it was why we didn't mind paying $50. Cause we're like, it's going to be a pretty sweet players pack. We'll get some discs, you know, it'll be fun. It's fun to compete. I like competing in tournaments. It's a different game mode. It's more intense. Usually you play worst because you're not used to that level. You're used to just playing for fun or practicing. So I like putting myself in those situations. But we show up to the tournament. Uh, there's literally no signs. I was like, I think we're at the wrong place. Because on the PDJ event page, it said it was supposed to be another city, but it got changed to here because COVID stuff and they postponed it. And so they changed it to here. And there was no signs, no banners, nothing letting me know that there was a tournament going on. There was people there and there was a bunch of people. So I was like, okay, we're probably at the right place. And, but there was nothing else for being a national amateur disc golf tour event. Um, there was absolutely nothing. And then we're like, okay, cool. And there's no players meeting, nothing. And the guy that's in charge, we're not going to say names. We're not going to say what the event was or anything. Um, if you're local, you can probably guess it, but he just had like some notebook and he was checking people in and that was it. And a box of discs on the back of his car. That was, that was the whole like check-in booth and everything. And we're like, okay, so uh, can we check in and get our players packs? And it's pretty much like, yeah, like well, what disc did you choose? Cause you have the option of choosing whatever disc you wanted. And he's like, well, all I have is these like last two in a, DGT stamped disc mania discs, which I like disc mania discs, but that's not what we picked. That's not the options that we chose. And we we're like, what do you have something else? And he was like, no, like they, this is all they sent me or something like that. And did not get our dry fits. The other player that was on my card said that he literally had to press the guy to give him the dry fit. He's like, well, all I have is like so many. He's like, well, one of those needs to be mine. Cause like literally almost paid for it. Like that's, the players pack so for this $50 which plus taxes so it came out to like $60 for me and so like 70 for you we got a NADGT stamped disc mania driver disc that was it 
Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, it's I'm holding it up right now. Uh, check it out. It's literally just a, yeah, like you said, it's literally just that logo and then the Discmania logo on there. The disc is a, it's a PDX. Um, so it's actually a pretty good disc. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a decent disc. It's maybe a disc that, who knows, maybe we can do a little YouTube video on and kind of throw it around and kind of see what it does. I like the plastic. I kind of like the feel of it. But also, it's not a disc that is worth seventy dollars it's not a cloud breaker it's not a sky rider i think was the name of simon's new release yeah. disc uh you know it's it, it's not a you know limited edition paul Macbeth hades you know it, it's not a collector's item this is a disc that if i lost today i literally probably wouldn't care that i lost it and I, yeah, again, I think it's just absolutely ridiculous that we paid that much money for a single disc, a one disc player's pack. Um, I emailed them and I'm still waiting to hear a response because I either want my money back or I want the actual player's pack that I signed up for one or the other, regardless, this is ridiculous. And so I think that's something that, you know, I was definitely very worried when we pulled up as well. Cause I was like, wow, it literally looks like this is not a tournament going on right now. Um, we didn't, yeah, he pretty much just handed us this disc and was like, here you go. This is what you get. And, uh, you know, they had pizza for lunch, but, like, I don't think that should be a cost that we have to take on. I could have went and gotten my own lunch yeah. very easily. There was an hour in between rounds. So we very easily could have done that. So that was definitely just a big red flag. Um, if you know, you know, but I definitely will not be participating in another tournament held by this individual. If I see that they're the tournament director, I will not be partaking. Um, that's just me. And I think that's something that maybe new players should also be aware of that if they're, I think something also that kind of, that probably should have been a bigger red flag than it was, was all of the just lack of information. Yeah. Um, it just said that, you know, round starts at 10 or something like that. And that was literally the only scheduling information. Like, where do I know what hole I'm on? You know, when is the players meeting? What time does check-in start? Like all those kinds of things. Like really none of that was there. And so that should have been, and now is a major red flag for me. If that information is not there, this might not be a tournament that I want to be in. If you've ever been on disc golf scene, if you haven't, if you're still new, you haven't done a tournament, go check it out. Just kind of get a, get a, a familiar with it. Maybe we'll do a YouTube video or a podcast episode about disc golf scene uh, in general. Let us know on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. If, if you uh, want to see that, maybe if you're watching on YouTube, drop it in the comments. Let us know if that's something that you would want to see. D us uh, all that stuff but anyways it, in the comment section there would be questions asked and just no response for days weeks a very long time and that should have been another major red flag if the tournament director is not answering questions not being proactive then that might not be the best tournament that you want to compete in that was the only way to get information yeah yeah the comment Pretty section of a sign up listing. Like there was no email sent out. There was nothing that came out. Oh, you're registered. If you have any questions or if there's a director, nothing. It was, if you want like comments on the event page, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was not good. And it was one of those things where, I mean, you talked about a little bit earlier how the event had gotten like postponed and moved a couple of times. And so people would literally be asking, hey, is this event even going on? No response, no response, no response, no response, no response. Um, so that those are definitely two things that as newer players you want to look out for. I honestly did not know to look out for those things until this tournament. So take what happened to us and be able to apply to yourself and be able to apply and don't let this happen to yourself because it's really not fun and – it did make the experience significantly worse among other things. And, you know, it was very windy. I think it was what, 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts, maybe even more. So yeah. our play obviously was not going to be bad. My head was not able to be in the tournament. And so we didn't play that great, but yeah, just not good. It was not a good experience. Maybe you've had this problem. If you've played in tournaments, uh, listeners, Horatio as well, where your card mates, We'll be playing music, smoking cigarettes, drinking, and like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm all for having a good time. You know, I get it. Maybe that's how some people get in the zone, but I don't think 
you as a player should be like, yo, can I play music? Or, yo, I'm just going to start smoking cigarettes because that takes someone else out of the floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it's a casual round, if it's league night, whatever, I don't yeah. care. Completely different. But we all paid at least bare minimum $50 before tax to play in this tournament. I don't want to hear the same five classic rock songs and smell cigarettes the whole time. That's not yeah. something that I want to do. And yeah. very, so that was just very annoying. Very, very bad experience. Uh, what, what else do you have to say about this? I feel like I might be missing a couple of things. Um, one thing, especially being a NADGT event, PDGA, um, one person, I think one other person maybe didn't show up. And then so we all had assigned tees. And then so I went to my card and it was one other player. It was just me and him. And I think he said that he tried to tell the director, like, hey, you're not, like, because of PDGA rules, you're not allowed to have two people per card. And so we played the whole round, like, just as when someone else commented, like, well, where's your other player? Like, there should be minimum three. And he's like, no, the guy said that he's done it before. It's fine. Just play the round. And the other cards were three players. So there's no reason why we couldn't have been broken up and made four player cards, but instead we were left just as two um, players, which, I mean, I could see why, like, that's a rule because if you know the other player uh, Mm -hmm. and if you're not very um, truthful, there's nothing to keep you guys from just saying, you know, yeah, I part of that. I mean, literally, if you and I played together, we could just be like, oh, yeah, we birdied that, we birdied that. Oh, yep. Oh, no, we got a bogey on there. Let's make this look a little bit believable. And you just put ourselves in a position. We could literally be on the PDGA score uh, website and see what other people are doing and make sure we're one or two strokes better than them every single time. Because normally, at least when we enter tournaments, and I – I think that if you want to do this, by all means, you should do this. And I'm not afraid to say I do this. When I sign up, I ask in the registration, when it asks for any comments or anything, I ask to play with you because I want to play the tournament with somebody I know, with somebody who's played the course before. You know, I I think I'll have a better time doing that than just playing with some randoms the whole time. And because normally every single card is four people at bare, you know, minimum three people, that should literally never be a problem because there's at least going to be another person there. Also, I'd like to think that most disc golfers are, you know, not going to cheat and stuff like yeah. that. We would never do that. Um, so but we've played with some players that do that's like true. to our faces. That is true. That is true. That, you know what? I wish, I wish I could say you're wrong, but we have been in a couple tournaments, multiple tournaments where that's happened. I, yeah. the, the, oh, uh, a side, side note, side note. If we're playing in a round together, you don't have to check me on my, on my score. I'm going to give you the truth of what I threw. Yeah. And this guy, this guy, the one who's smoking and he was, you know, playing the same five classic raps or classic rock songs and then politics radio, the, the whole round. Uh, he tried to tell me that I got a six on a whole. And I was like, guy, how does that make any sense? Like, I'll, I'll be completely honest. I got a five. I hit the first available tree, and it sent it the wrong way. And then I tried to throw a long four. This was already, I think, playing as the, one of the top three most difficult holes. And then I tried to send a forehand. I just rolled it over. So I put myself way out of position. And so then I threw my up shot, and then I threw an approach shot, and then I put, and it went in. So that's a five. And my man tried – he tried to argue with me and like almost bully me into being like, no, that's a six. And I was like, guy, I'm genuinely so confused right now. How is that a six? Um, And then literally a hole or two later, the other, the third guy on our card was then not truthful about his own score because he said, he said he got a three. And I was like, guy, I didn't say it because I don't really care that much. If you, if you want to be dishonest about your score, I don't care because you I don't know. I don't know. You're not that good of a player. You have to lie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. If you, (laughs) if you have to prop up your own score by lying, then a, you're only tricking yourself and you're not getting better. And you're really not that good of a player. Like I would much rather finish a tournament plus 10 and that be reality. And I know what I need to work on than me lie and say, yeah, I finished plus two. 
and I get yeah. like third in the tournament or something like that. Like that's just, I don't know. That's just not who I am. That's not something I would ever do. Um, but yeah, that de- guy definitely threw a four and he was just like cool about it. And I was like, all right, you know what? I, I literally don't care enough. I'm not going to call someone out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be able to count my own score correctly. And you know, it is what it is, but overall bad experience. I didn't have fun for a multitude of reasons. And yeah, I will not be playing another tournament hosted by that director. How'd you do on the, how'd you do your second round? Oh, I did great. My second round. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, <sighs> oh man. Um, yeah, I took a six on every single hole the second round. That's also because we didn't play the second round. Yeah. We left. I mean, the tournament was so bad, so unorganized. Um, the day was just not good, especially with the – if if the wind wasn't there, we probably would have played the second round. But, yeah. I mean, we're talking about 30, 35-mile-per-hour gusts, let's be honest. I couldn't putt from 10 feet away because – the wind would just absolutely haul off on my disc. And that's also a me thing. I need to get better at that. I need to be better at putting into the wind. So that's definitely a me thing, but being already in that position, it was not fun, not having a good time. And yeah. um, with everything else that happened to me that day, I was, I was done. I, my, I my head was, say, if, it, if it had been a better experience as far as the tournament, where it was a good tournament director, we got our players pack. It was fun time. Our cards were fun. We were having a good time, regardless of the wind and if we were playing bad. Yeah. And what happened that morning, I would have stayed there and finished because we paid. We paid to that to compete, even though we're sucking. That's not their fault. That's yep. our fault. But because of it was just worthless. I was like, you already took my money. I don't feel like playing because I feel like you already. This has been bad. I don't. I don't care. I don't want to play. I'm not going to play because you know. Yeah. They basically didn't respect the tournament at that point. So I was like, nah. And the only reason we really kind of played it was just because you were already in town. We had already paid the money. We were like, let's go and do this. We're already here. Might as well. But it was just so bad that we were like, nah, I'd rather just go home and watch. Uh, watch the live coverage. Yeah. Watch the live coverage. Uh, yeah. I completely agree. I think that's a really good uh, wrapping up of it because it was one of those things where it's like, you know what? I literally through all this might as well go and play it. I mean, if we still have the time to be able to, be able to go and play, it, we should do it. We should go give it a shot. And we did. And it just was not what we expected. And I feel as though I was disrespected as a player. So I felt like I didn't have to respect that tournament. Um, if I was going to be disrespected as a player, maybe that's on me, but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I was not going to do another round. I knew it was going to be the same thing, if not worse. And they already had my money, so it is what it is. Uh, that's, that's at least for me. Maybe you'll play it a couple others, but I'm done for the 2020 season, uh, especially after what happened. Uh, I'm done. I'm going to be tapping out. And I hate the cold. I'm also someone who very much hates the cold, uh, yeah. big anti-cold guy. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be done. I'm done for the 2020 season. It's time to get in the lab. It's time to work hard. It's time to get better and attack the 2021 season and be much better during 2021, play some of those key tournaments. It'll also be easier for me because I'll be out of school. I'll, I'll be in a full-time position with uh, my company. And so it'll be a lot easier for me to be able to actually participate in tournaments and get better and do all of those things. So I'm done for the 2020 season. If you still have tournaments going on in the 2020 season, we would love to hear about them. Make sure you throw them in the comments down below. If you are watching on YouTube, DM us on Instagram, put us out on your story on Instagram. We'll add you to our story. Leave us a rating review on Apple Podcasts. Let us know about your disc golf tournament experiences if you've had any maybe you've had a nightmare disc golf experience at a tournament like we had this past weekend we want to hear about it we want to hear those comments we want to see those instagram and twitter dms we want to see the stories we want to see the apple podcast ratings and reviews so definitely definitely let us know and before we get to our next segment i know i said it uh last week 
I do want to read the new ratings and reviews that have come in. Um, the newest one that we got uh, comes from I Disc Good, and they say it's enjoyable and it's about disc golf. So they they say they give us five stars. Thank you so much. They said listen through every episode so far. These guys are off to a great start with this pod. Looking forward to seeing what they have in store for the average disc golfer like myself. Love the episode with Casey White. A must listen. I completely agree. The episode with Casey nice. is an absolute must listen definitely if you haven't checked it out go check it out casey white disc mania he's a very good disc golfer he has a lot to to teach us he is someone who uh is around at least my age he's only like a, a year or less than a year younger than myself and he kind of talks about the the differences between being a pro and going to college and what you should do and maybe pro life isn't for everyone and he does a really good job of explaining that it's a really awesome listen so definitely go check it out if you are watching on youtube hey check out our uh vlog our first vlog that we did uh i ordered a discraft mystery box a paul mcbeth line so it came with three discs and then the 10 disc random mystery box we unboxed it so definitely go check that out as well horatio let's get into the other part of today's yeah. episode the new era of disc golf why are we talking about that today so we just had the disc golf pro tour championship which in the past two years, and this would have been three times in a row that Chris Dickerson would have won it, would have. So spoilers, if you don't want to know, if you're going to watch this, um, stop listening here because um, we are going to talk about who won, who took first place and all that. So in men's, Kevin Jones took first place and amazing battle to the very end. He barely qualified yesterday yeah, and then was able to get in the – top four today and play but we don't need to talk too much about um the event that way people can still watch even if they know who won it's gonna it's impossible to not find out who won that's true and i'm also a big believer i know brody smith started this but i agree with him as well you can't spoil live sports all right i'm sorry you can't spoil live sports that's like watching the the royals game and then being like Oh, yeah, did you see the Royals lose last night? Oh, come on, dude. I was going to watch that tonight. Bro, it's it's live sports. You can yeah. really check a- anything. It's going to be on social media. It's live sports. It is what it is. If you don't want it to be spoiled, then shut yourself off to literally everything else or watch it live. I, it's live sports. I don't think you can get spoiled yeah. by live sports. But I know it's still fun to see. Even if you know who won, it's still fun to see how they won and how it went down. So we don't need to talk that way. I can still – Still see it and some of the amazing shots. Um, But just a quick rundown of this. We're talking about this new blood in disc golf, new era. Um, So Kevin Jones, who won, is 21 years old. Haley King, who won females, um, is 18 years old. Um, Paige Pierce, who took second place, who should be, is 29 years old. Paul McBeth is 30. Katrina Allen, who took third place, is 35. Kyle Klein, um, this kind of just threw in there because he was putting down some amazing rounds these last couple of days and just, like, dominating his cards. Um, he's 17 years old. So, Evil McMahon is also, I think, 21 or 22. Um, uh, I can look that up real quick. And then who's the other player? Uh, Calvin Heinberg is, like, 21 or 22 but a lot of these new players dominating disc golf are very very young and one thing that comes to mind is um, Paul Macbeth it was he was going into a final round of a tournament I don't remember which one but they were interviewing him and they asked him if he was worried um, about the next round going into the final because of the other players or how like they're playing and he said, there's a lot of great players, a lot of young young players, but they're not very consistent. So I'm not super worried. And Paul McBeth being greatest, you know, being a GOAT that he is, he, he, he won that tournament. But now I think a lot of these young players that he was talking about, they are now a lot better and more consistent. And he does have a lot more to worry about, like we saw in this last event. Which, I mean, a lot of these players had a lot going on. Ricky Waisaki, also one of the veterans, he had a Lyme's disease that he had to recover from from last season. Paul McBeth, I know he's building a disc golf course on his property, and he's doing a lot of stuff with Discraft, and he was doing a lot of YouTube videos. And so 
I don't know if he was as hungry or as focused this season that he has been in the past. And I think maybe we kind of saw that. But also, these there's a lot of new, hungry, motivated kids who want this. And they want this lifestyle, and they're going to do whatever it takes. And so that's why we're seeing this change in um, in champions. Yeah, and, and I mean, also with Paul McBeth, the ankle injury has bothered him pretty much yeah. all season long. Resurfaced this past weekend, and he did not make the cut for the final round of the Pro Tour Championship. Just to circle back onto Eagle McMahon, he was born in 98. So, yeah, he's 22 years old, which is just remarkable i mean it's just wild uh, being so close to these guys in age and just thinking wow i could be that good but i'm not but the point of this podcast is the likelihood that myself or you know you someone in that age range being like i'm gonna be the next eagle mcmahon it, let's be honest probably not gonna happen just but, like any so we're probably not going to be up to that elite pro level, but at the end of the day, we can still get better. We can still improve our own disc golf game and achieve what we want to in disc golf. We can play in local tournaments and have fun and compete and just overall become better disc golf players. And I think that's also a big factor of this podcast is that's, that's where we're focusing. You know, we're not trying to be like, yo, you're going to be the next Paul McBeth, but you can become a better disc golfer. You can have fun disc golfing. And I think that's uh, very important to do, but really, I guess the other thing that I want to talk about is who would you consider, you know, especially with all these newcomers coming up, Eagles, incredible. Kevin's incredible. Paul McBeth, Ricky Wysocki, they have to compete with these guys. Neither of them made the cut at the at the Pro Tour Championship. We had three guys who were pretty – and Chris Dickerson is a veteran in of himself. He's 27, but Calvin Heinberg and Kevin were both there. I'm not sure how old Austin, Austin Hannum is. But nonetheless, it's definitely a young man's game. It's not – your father, your grandfather's all, we're going to go smoke some weed and drink a bunch of beer and go throw some Frisbees and use one single Frisbee the whole time, which if you use one single Frisbee, tell me how the heck you do that. I really would love to know. I don't, I can't do that. I'm not that good. So you're definitely better than me. Let me know if you're someone who uses one Frisbee or if you actually change the Frisbee you use when you throw. So definitely let me know on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at uh, chain clinkers. So really what I want to get to now is who do you think is going to be remembered as the victor of 2020? Because normally when there's the world championship kind of is the tournament that says, you know, Paul McBeth was the winner of 2019 because he won the world championship. We obviously didn't have a world championship this year. So is it Kevin Jones for winning the tour championship or is it Chris Dickerson for winning the USDGC, the only official major of the year? Um, well, no, he wasn't, they were doing the trophies and uh, disc golf pro tour points. First place was Paul McBeth. So he won the most points for 2020 for winning and taking and placing in the most events. So based off the of points, it was still Paul McBeth, even though he didn't win this just golf pro tour championship. Um, he still took first place in points, but I think if you don't count points and based off performances and events won and um, rounds played, I would say that the best player in my opinion, of the season was Kevin Jones. Really? He won, he won this big event. I wanted. I was hoping Calvin Heinberg would win. If he had won today, I would say him. Clear cut. He's the best player of 2020. Calvin Heinberg? Yeah, if he wins this tournament. Yeah. Yeah, because he was just so clean with his performances and dominating his putt was unbelievable. And he had a bunch of awesome rounds. Eagle McMahon, I think if he would have won, they were all pretty close in my opinion. Calvin, Kevin Jones, and Eagle McMahon in that kind of bracket of constantly being up there in first, second place, or winning events. Eagle McMahon won two Pro Tour events. He was one of the only ones to win back-to-back. Um, Calvin Heinberg, he won, I think, only one Pro Tour event. He won the Memorial 
Um, oh, so he won two then, because he won one recently, last week. Jonesboro? That was the last one before it was, like, USDGC. Um, I can't remember who won Jonesboro. Let me look it up real quick. It could have been him. Um, let's, let's see here. Um, Jonesboro disc golf, disc golf champion. And let's, let's see who it was. Um, we'll go to the PGA. Um, yes, it was Calvin Heimberg. He won with a score or excuse me of negative 31. Paul Macbeth was negative 30. Garrett Gerthy was negative 25, and Chris Diggerson, negative 24. Yeah, so. So, yeah, two Pro Tour wins, and if he would have won the Pro Tour championship, it would have been him, easily. And I think I could have said the same thing about Eagle. I think I would say the same thing about Eagle Big Man, but it's harder because Calvin, in my opinion, was literally top 10. It felt like every single week he was always there where i don't think i could say the same for eagle mcmahon um eagle mcmahon obviously a fantastic i consider it a breakout year for him but i think ultimately at the end of the day it's hard it's really hard but i still think for player of the year i give it to calvin heimberg i think calvin heimberg was the more Man, just listening to it right now, I do question myself and say maybe it should be Paul McBeth because he was also in every single tournament as well, and he has two wins on tour this year as well. But I think that Paul McBeth, in my opinion, maybe just because of how good he has been, he looked shakier this year, where Calvin Heimberg looked to get stronger this year. So maybe that's why I inevitably go with Calvin Heimberg as he was the player of the year in 2020. I think there's a massive argument for Chris Dickerson because he did win the USDGC. Now, if we're going to base this argument off of USDGC versus Pro Tour champion championship winner, who is the player of the year, in my opinion, it's Chris Dickerson because the USDGC is more important in my eyes. So I think that he will be remembered more this year than Calvin Heimberg will be because he won the USDGC and the USDGC this year was pretty much like the world's champ world championship and will go down as the most important championship in 2020. Would you yeah. agree with that? Or do you think you'd go in a different direction? Uh, no, I agree with it. Cause I mean, this one was a record breaking payout for both so at the time when they gave the check to the females, to Haley King, that time giving her that $20,000 check was the highest paying in disc golf history. And then when they gave it in, later that evening to Kevin Jones, they tied that record for being the highest paid event in disc golf history. So I think for as big as the event was and the caliber of players that were there, because I would say there was some tournaments where – not every a a list a level player was at the event mm-hmm. there was a lot less competition this one like going into the quarterfinals semifinals it was all super super good players and so you were competing against the best of the best there wasn't a world championship this year but i think this was as close as it got to world championship I agree. The now, are you saying that for the USDGC or for the Pro Tour Championship? Pro Tour Championship. Really? Okay, so we disagree there, um, because I do. I think the USDGC is more important. I understand more money was put into the Pro Tour Championship, but I think the USDGC just matters more. And maybe it's just maybe I have a fallacy here of thinking because it's a major, it's more important. I I just think the USDGC will rem- be remembered more than the pro tour championship yeah another thing is also like look at the scores from these like the rounds i don't remember the scores from the disc golf or the usdgc but in these rounds the players that were taking play first place or advancing were scoring like a three four under mm-hmm. minus six the really rounds were like minus seven yeah and so i think it was a much more difficult course also yeah i agree i think the course was more difficult uh, i mean i think I want to say minus nine was the victory for Kevin this week. 
I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, yeah. we want to we want to hear what you have to say. Who do you think is going to get remembered more? Is it going to be Chris Dickerson with that USDGC championship, or is it going to be Kevin Jones with the Pro Tour championship? Who do you think is going to be remembered as the best disc golfer in 2020? Will it be one of those two because of the that win? Or could it be a Calvin Heimberg? Could it be an Eagle McMahon? Paul McBeth, we want to hear who you think it is. Let us know Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Chain Clinkers. Right. Comment down below as well. Horatio, go ahead. Let me ask you this uh, before we go. Before in the past, it was Ricky and Paul. A lot of Paul dominating yeah. the sport. Do you think with the amount of players now and the field of really high caliber players, like we can't decide who was the best this year because mm-hmm. there were so many. Do you think going forward there will be a player like that? Like it will be one player dominating kind of like how Paige Pierce is dominating the female, or do you think it's going to continue to be like this competitive? If you want to win, you're going to have to play the best every single weekend. <gasps> it's not going to get, it's not going to be a give me. Kevin Jones or Eagle McMahon, you know, they find their game and they absolutely just start dominating. I think that there's not going to be somebody who is as good as Paul Macbeth is. And I don't think there will be somebody who is as dominant as Paul Macbeth. Really? I don't think so. I think that this is going to be, unless it's just something out of this world, I mean, starts at three years old is a, you know what I mean? Like you are born to be the best disc golfer ever. I think that's what it's going to take to be better than Paul McBeth's legacy because yes, there are some players who have more world championships than him, but I think that came at a time where disc golf was not nearly as competitive. I think we are currently living at the most competitive time of disc golf. And I think that is only going to increase. I think there are solid guaranteed five guys who are going to be there week in and week out. I think that number grows to 10 next year. And then who knows where it can grow to in the years coming up. So I don't think we will see another dominant run like Paul McBeth had in the sport of disc golf, unless it's something or someone who's just unreal. So, I mean, ratings, and you're talking about someone that's been playing since they were three or four, a lot of these new kids right now playing dominating, like, Eagle, like uh, Kevin Jones, and them, they've been playing since they were like five or six. Yeah. They've been playing since they were toddlers. And if you talk about ratings, um, Paul McBeth was one of the first to break the 1050 rating. He was like one of the first in history. And one of the other ones to also do it, I believe, was Calvin Heimberg. And so he's only, I think we said Calvin was 21 or 22. And so he's already at that level. 21 or 22, he continues to dominate at this age. I don't see why he or Eagle couldn't surpass Paul McBeth. I think the difference will be that those two have to compete with Paul McBeth. They have to compete with Ricky Wysocki. They have to compete with Kevin Jones. They have to compete with Chris Dickerson, Garrett Gerthy, Paul Eulaberry. Um, The list goes on and on where – Paul Macbeth, and maybe this just shows how new of players we are, he only had to compete with Ricky Wysocki, in my opinion, for the most part, who that was his number one rival. It was Paul or Rick was going to win. We're now going into a tournament. Paul could win. Rick could win. Eagle could win. Simon, maybe. Uh, Kevin can win. Chris Dickerson can win. Paul Uliberry can win. And there's a bunch of other guys who, if they have a hot – tournament they can win as well where i just don't think it's it was not that competitive back then i could be wrong so but would you say then that paul Macbeth was actually that high of player or did he yes. have less competition i think he was that high of player but i do also think he had less competition in my opinion yeah um i do i still think that paul Macbeth is the best player right now in disc golf i think that without yeah. a doubt but I, I guess him having him having an ankle injury and all the other stuff that was happening and being dealing with that and still showing up and taking the most points in the disc golf pro tour says a lot. Like he still managed to do that with injuries. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, literally, this was an injury-riddled season. This was a season where he was focused on foundation disc golf. This was a season where he's building his own disc golf course in his, in his yard. This was his most distracted season. This was the season with the most competition he's ever had to deal with, and he still won on points. That's And he played less tournaments than all these other guys. So, I mean, the more that I talk about it, maybe he should have been the guy I said was the player of the year for 2020. But I still think I give the nod to Calvin. Head-to-head, Calvin was more impressive when he had to go against Paul. Um, and I correct me if someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure every time they went head to head that Calvin won or had a better round than Paul did. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I do still believe that Paul is the best player in the world right now. I believe he will be again next year. I believe that if there's one player I had to pick to do something in disc golf to save my life, it would be him and that he is the best but the competition level is rising. I'm excited to see um, him go home at, on this off season and just grind, which is probably like he's going to get in, you know, bunker down and just focus on coming back. Probably not being the competitive player that he is not being happy with taking first place in points. I don't think he mm-hmm. took as many trophies home as he would have liked. So he is going to come back motivated and a lot of these other players are going to come back super motivated. So I think next year is going to be so much fun. I think hot take Paul McBeth is going to come back next year and he's going to lead the tour in tour victories. And I think that 2021 is going to be a, I'm still Nick beast. I'm still the best player in the world. You cannot touch me. I think that's the kind of year we're expecting for Paul McBeth in 2021. That's going to wrap up today's episode. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think, I think, I think we had a good show. Um, yeah. I think, I think we talked about a lot of good stuff and let us know. I really do want to know, have you had a negative disc golf tournament experience? What was your experience like? Will you play uh, another tournament? If you know that that, person who was the TD for that tournament what is going to be the TD for a tournament you're thinking about playing let us know let us know how the wind affects your game let us know if you agree with our player of the year and uh, the whole Paul McBeth debate and if he's still the greatest in the world right now who do you think won the tour who was the best player on tour this year let us know in the comments section let us know on Instagram Twitter Facebook all at chain clankers for Horatio MQ we'll see you next time Thank you for listening to the Chain Clankers podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chain Clankers and hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to us from so you never miss another episode.